everybody. Welcome to episode 52 of the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, and I'm coming to you from Ontario, Canada. Today is Wednesday, January the 19th, 2021. I would first like to start off by welcoming any new viewers who may be tuning in for the very first time. Welcome. And to all my returning viewers, welcome back. This is a podcast mostly about my knitting and crocheting adventures. And sometimes there's some other fibery fun in there too, depending on what crafty rabbit hole I'm going down. So if that's your kind of thing, this is the podcast for you. So you can find me on the interwebs as Inspired Knitting Podcast on Instagram. That's where I am most active. And you can also find me on Ravelry as X Country Girl 1986X. So you can find um, project pages and such there. We do have a Ravelry group for the podcast. Um, however, I haven't been keeping up with that. I've just been putting detailed show notes with links to what I'm talking about, about in the description box below. It's just a little bit easier for me and I'm able to keep up better with that. So yeah. Um, so something I kind of made a goal for, I don't really do uh, resolutions. Um, they're just yeah, they're kind of stressful, especially when you make them and they kind of don't turn out. So I kind of don't do that at all. Um, but I do set goals for the year. And one of the goals that I made for this year was I would like to uh, keep my Ravelry a little bit more updated. I used to be better at it, but I kind of fell off track. So now I would like to get back to that and just try to keep it more up to date with everything I've done. So it's a really nice way to look back and see what you have done. So yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get on into the podcast because it's been three weeks since we last chatted and I have a lot to share with you. I have quite a few finished objects and along with the new year brought a cast on party of sorts. So I have a few new things on the needles. Yeah. Today's beverage is um, just a simple uh, Tim Hortons steep tea. I have a Keurig, so yeah, it's quite simple, but in very enjoyable. The special thing, though, is the mug. This mug was gifted to me by my bestie Shelby uh, before I left the Maritime, so it's a very treasured mug, so thank you, Shelby. So the first thing that I am going to talk about today is what I'm wearing. So the last time, or yeah, the last time we spoke, uh, this was definitely off the needles. I just hadn't washed and blocked it yet. But this is my throw over by Andrea Maori. And if you haven't watched the podcast before, I knit it out of Cascade Eco Plus, which is 100% Pavilion Highland wool and my contrast uh, was knit using a uh, sport weight but I held it double so the first uh, white color is Cascade Cascade plus hemp and it's like a sport weight yarn so I held it double the middle color is uh, Midnight Cravings in their Daydreamer colorway and it is a fingering weight, so I held that double. And then the burgundy at the bottom is also Cascade plus hemp, and I held that double as well. So the sweater is worst, uh, a worsted weight sweater. And now the Cascade uh, Eco Plus is more of a heavy worsted. So yeah, holding these double, um, it gave me the same gauge, so that worked out perfectly. Um, not sure if you guys noticed, but I did a big no-no. I kept, like put the sweater on my couch and my cats have been laying on it. So they kind of pulled a strand of yarn out there. But that's an easy fix, so I'll have to fix that. But yeah, besides that, I really love the sweater. Um, it, even though it's pavilion wool, um, it's softened up considerably with washing. And Andrea Maori, I just love her. She's an amazing designer. I love all of her patterns. I pretty much want to knit all of her patterns. 
but she has some awesome tutorials um, for certain stitch patterns and that on YouTube. And she also has some very good tips when it comes to blocking. So when it came to block the sweater, I just um, washed it with my wool wash and I wrung it out to get the excess water out. And Andrea recommends using a bath towel. So I just laid my sweater out on the towel, rolled it up, and I kept it rolled up for about 10, 15 minutes to soak up the remaining water. And then I took it out and I just laid it flat to dry. So I didn't pin it, nothing like that, and it turned out perfectly. So yeah, I have been wearing it a lot. I've hit the visual ends that you could see, but my color work sections, I still need to weave those in. That ain't a surprise. <laughs> but yes, I just love it. Um, when it comes to going outside in that, I do have a big jacket, but I prefer to wear uh, either hoodies or this is now my next go-to. I can just layer underneath it and it keeps me nice and warm and nice and dry if it's snowing and such. So yeah, I just love it. Highly recommend it. So yes, this is The Throw Over by Andrea Mowry. Okay, so now on to finished objects. I have quite a few. So the first one I'm going to start with is a test knit that I did. Um, I love uh, Lindsay Fowler. She is the designer behind Lark's Spur Knits. Uh, she used to uh, be under Lost and Fawn on Instagram, and she also had the Lost and Fawn podcast. She hasn't uploaded a podcast in a while, which is kind of sad because I really love her. Um, but she did a testing call um, just before Christmas, I believe. So I decided to take my chances and throw in an application to be a test knitter, and I got it. So um, if you follow her on Instagram, you've probably already seen the hat. It's called the Snow Quill Hat. And it is a chunky hat and it's like garter and lace and it's not difficult at all guys. It is beginner friendly. So yes, I decided to uh, throw my hat in for the test knit and you could pick what size you wanted to do. I chose to do the size one, which is toddler. It goes from a uh, size one toddler up to adult large. So yeah, I chose to do the toddler one because if you know me, sometimes when it comes to test knits, I'm not always the fastest at finishing them. So yeah, I figured that I could probably finish a toddler's hat in time. So without further ado, here is the hat that I did. So as you can see, you, you have a beautiful uh, garter base which helps make the uh, detail uh, stand out a lot more for the le le leaf motif. And it is continued on the other side. And one of my favorite things about this hat is the, uh, the base of the hat is like a twisted rib. I just think that is so beautiful. It is just stunning. I love it. So for the yarn choice that I used, I wanted to use something for my stash. So I had a ball of uh, De Ruma Natura in the Gilead base, which I don't have the tag. Um, I seem to have lost it. Uh, but it is, I believe, 100% lamb's wool. So it comes in a 100, uh, 100 gram ball. And for the size one toddler hat, I used 23 grams of yarn. So not too bad at all. I believe I have enough to make the adult version of this hat as well, which I am debating if I want to use this or I have another skein up there that I think would look, I think I would like a little bit better with this pattern. But either way, it's just a beautiful hat. Um, the colorway uh, name is Caramel, and I just love, love that color. It's blowing out a little bit, um, but there we go. I would say that's more true to color right there. 
It's just a beautiful caramel color. I love it. So yeah, that is the Snow Quill Hat by Lindsay Fowler. And it is to be released soon. So do keep your eyes open for that. Like I said, it is not hard at all. The leaf pattern is very easy to follow. And it was super fast to knit because it's big needles, big chunky yarn. So it knits up pretty fast. So yes, do keep on the lookout for that. Okay, so the next thing I have to share with you guys is another finished object. This one I cast it on just before Christmas, I believe, and I don't remember if I shared it or not, but it is my Little Pine Trees hat by Cozy Up Knits. And yeah, this is another one that I really, really love. So it is a DK weight hat and I can't honestly tell you what the yarns are because I don't remember. This uh, beautiful color, burgundy color, was some leftovers. I don't know what they are. There was no tag. Um, I would like to say that this gold is um, Harvest by Midnight Cravings. The plain natural color there is Yarn Habit. That Yarn Habit. And... The blue is Barocco Tweed. They're all DK weights. So yeah, I just pulled together a bunch of scraps and this is what I got. And I put this beautiful fun pom-pom on it to kind of contrast with the bottom. And it's pulling out some of the gold there. It's so pretty. Do not remember where I got this pom-pom from. So I'm sorry guys, I'm the worst. But I really, really enjoy it. Uh, I never checked my gauge for this hat. It fits me very well. It's just a little, um, what do you call it, slouchy. <laughs> I don't mind slouchy. It's fine. So, yeah. Otherwise, besides that, it's a beautiful hat. And I kind of want to make more. <laughs> I just have, I don't have a lot of uh, leftover DK I. So yeah, I have to wait till I uh, get some more leftovers and I will most likely knit another one because it was super fun. So this is the Little Pine Tree Hat by Cozy Up Knits. I love it. I have another hat to share with you guys. Uh, this is another Cozy Up pattern and this is the Miette. And I knit this one. This is again DK weight yarn. And I do apologize. I had to shut my blinds because the sun was overtaking. But now I feel like my light is overtaking. Just a minute here. We'll see if this helps. There we go. That's a lot better. So the yarn I use for this is yarn ink. And like I said, it is DK and it's in her crackle colorway. So it's a beautiful natural with these beautiful pops of uh, like a beautiful orange. So pretty. I think one of my favorite details is this beautiful slip stitch. I love that. So I believe it was last summer, uh, Cozy Up uh, released their Miette shawl which is a three skein DK weight shawl and it has that beautiful there we go it has that beautiful texture in one of the sections so I saw that I've always wanted to do the Miette shawl and I had it casted on and it got lost in the fire um, so I decided that when this hat came out I had to have it so this one here is sadly not for me. <laughs> I knit this one up for my bestie shell, so she's going to be getting this one. Um, this here, Pom Pom, I might be mistaken, but I believe it's an Estelle Pom Pom. And it's one that has the, um, like the snap on it, so it can be removed and switched out, which I really, really love that. 
And yeah, I just thought that palm really contrasted well with the hat. So this hat, I was actually surprised. Uh, we kind of had, because we're in lockdown, we're in phase two of lockdown here in Ontario. So it's a stay at home order. You can still go out and get essentials and stuff, but you're asked to stay at home. So there's been a lot of movies and a lot of knitting, which I love. So I gonna say this hat took me like six hours to make if I remember we went through three maybe four movies and I had it done so yeah I am super happy about that I already have a couple yarn choices set aside for another one for myself so yeah it's just a lot of fun and it's super quick to knit up this is not hard at all so do not be intimidated. But yeah, I love it. So do be on the lookout. There will be more of these coming. And eventually I would like to knit the Miette shawl as well. So yeah. So that was the Miette hat by Cozy Up Knits. Okay, so I have... couple more finished objects. So I believe these I definitely did show, I think. But I had um, joined Danny of the Little Bobbins podcast uh, in her annual Christmas Eve cast on, sock cast on. So it's, you don't have to use uh, any of Danny's patterns. She has quite a few beautiful patterns. Um, but you just cast on any sock you want with any yarn you want and it's just a fun little thing that we can all cast on at Christmas Eve. So I have done that for I think three years in a row. So this year was no exception. I have gotten I have gotten them both done, but I was I think I got the first one done before the new year. Um and then I just finished this one, the second one yesterday. So I'm not gonna put the other one on the sock blocker, but <laughs> there it is. Nothing uh, fancy about it. I used um, 60, uh, 2.25 millimeter needles and 64 stitches for the cuff. And then I decreased down to 60 stitches for the leg and the foot. So it's just plain stockinette and I did an afterthought heel, my typical rounded toe, just plain Jane simple. I did the legs slightly shorter on these because I have found that I prefer uh, shorter socks rather than longer. So yeah. So the yarn that I use for this is the Cozy Knitter in the Hopeless Romantic colorway. And this was the contrasting uh, mini that came with. So I did the heels, toes, and cuffs. And I just really, really love this. So I have enough yarn left over, I believe, to make another pair. Um, I'm not sure yet. I have to weigh it out. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to knit another pair for myself or maybe just knit up the pair as a gift or simply just put it into my scrappy blanket. I don't know yet, but I'm just super excited to have these off the needles because they will be my first pair of knitted socks that I can wear because, yeah, I, I love my knitted socks. I don't like wearing socks. If you know me, I don't like the socks, but when I do wear them, I, I like wearing my knitted ones, so this is exciting. Okay, so there's that. So my Christmas Eve cast on socks are all finished. Uh, in between uh, knitting those, I had finished the first one and I really wanted to cast on the Sprocket socks by Megan of Pip and Pin. And I just, I have been watching her podcast and I keep seeing these Sprocket socks. She also has a Sprocket hat as well, but I've been seeing them pop pop up on Instagram and that and I've been really really wanting to knit them so I had gotten a mini skein set uh, it was a timber yarns 
so it had five 20 gram minis in them and the sprocket socks are knit with five 20 gram minis and I decided that it needed to happen so here is the first one all done so the only thing that's different is the cuff and the toe that is not part of the skein uh, mini skein set so all of these colors were part of the uh, set that I got from Timber Yarns and this green came with um, a sock set that I got from Cozy Posy Yarn Co. I just really wanted that green in there I think it works so beautifully with the other colors so that is the first sock done and I did the same thing I followed uh, to pattern and as you can see it has this beautiful slip stitch between each color it's not hard to do at all so I pretty much just I just kept grabbing colors out as I I felt like it and I tried to match them up on the foot Although down here I got two of the browns where up here I got more of the gray. I'm not too concerned about it. I just love the colors. So yeah, I am loving that. They were super fast to knit because um, I find with cell, with cell striping yarns or when you're doing this, it is so addicting because you get the one color done and you just want to get that next color into it and then you want to get the next. So yeah, they knit up very fast. If I remember correctly, it took me two days to knit this sock. <laughs> Not impossible, but yeah. Um, let me see. What am I forgetting here? There's something. Okay. The Timber Yarn set comes with the gray, the charcoal, the brown, the gold, and then there's a lighter brown. I thought that would be... I wanted there to be a different pop in there so this color right here and right here is old soul fibers and it's in the smitten colorway and I had a little 10 gram mini um, from my row one yarns uh, subscription that I had gotten so I decided to add that in as a beautiful pop of color to kind of break up the the other colors and I'm glad I did because it's so pretty so I definitely have enough to make the next sock which I'm happy about I believe in the pattern it says that you use five grams I think no three grams per stripe so I'm following two patterns so I should definitely have enough to I believe I have enough to do the second sock. If I don't, um, I will just go stash diving and see if I have another mini that kind of works with it. They're scrappy socks. I'm not really concerned. So, yeah. I decided to follow pattern, so I have a, a longer leg on this one. Yep. So, hopefully I can uh, get the second one started. I haven't casted it on yet. Um, but, yeah. That's my Sprocket Sock by Pippin Pin. One thing I, I uh, did here, I had casted the, the Sprocket Sock on because I really wanted it to. I really wanted to. And then once I had casted that off, I casted on my second Christmas Eve sock. I remember watching Dan of the Bakery Bears podcast. Um, him and Kay, our husband and wife duo from uh, Britain, and I just love their podcast. I don't watch it. I haven't caught been caught up with it of late. But I remember watching and Dan was saying how uh, he always found it hard. We all deal with second sock syndrome. So how he combated it was by casting, uh, finishing one sock, casting on a totally different sock that he wanted to do, finishing that, and then going back and knitting the second sock. And it kind of broke up that... Uh, that you know knitting the same thing twice so I kind of like to do that too because it does really help I really wanted to knit the sprocket sock so I knit the first one and then I that cleansed my palette and I wanted to go back to my Christmas Eve cast on sock 
So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, if you have second sock syndrome, like many of us do, um, that is a good way to kind of break it up and do something different. So yeah. So there's that. And I have one more finished object to share with you. So my best friend Shelby, uh, she and I have been talking um, ever since last summer about designing. And she ended up, she's rocking it. She ended up coming out uh, with a new cowl pattern and I'm super excited about it. Um, I learned brioche last year, last spring, something like that. And I have been on Shelby's case to, to try it. And she caught on to it just like that, like I knew she would. And she created a brioche cowl. Oh my God, she is awesome. So here it is, this is mine. And I will insert pictures of Shelby's cowl that she did as well. So this is um, a chunky or bulky weight cowl. I believe it's uh, chunky. She knit hers out of Legacy Lane Fiber Mill yarn, uh, the Kitchen Sink Lopi, and it just uses one skein, and it's just a knit in the round, single color brioche, super fast to knit up, it only takes an hour to knit this cowl up because obviously big needles, it's knit on a 6.5 millimeter chunky weight yarn. So it is like super fast. And I will just put it on here, Ugh. choke myself. So yes, it is perfect to put on under a jacket and it'll keep your neck nice and warm and you can also like wear it up wear it up further as well however you like it so i just love it it sits really close to the neck to keep you warm it's not too high it's just perfect i love it so it she hasn't released it yet we're still uh doing some adjustments to it and such um Shelby is working on a double wrap one now. So it's the same yarn, single color brioche, but it's going to be a double wrap. So yeah, that is super exciting. And I can't wait for the pattern to come to life because it's pretty awesome. So the yarn that I used, I went stash diving. And I decided to use uh, Loops and Threads, which you can find at your local Michael store. And it's the York Big Grand. So it comes in 219 grams, or sorry, 219 yards, 200 gram ball. And it's a super bulky. And does it have a colorway name? Turquoise. <laughs> so, yeah. It's very much, I've never worked with before, this is the first time, it's very much like a roving of sorts. Not quite. <laughs> it will rip if you pull it hard enough, but I, I didn't have no tearing issues. But you can see like the, the little strand in there. It's just like a, a single ply yarn of sorts. It's really nice. It is 100% our, no. 95% acrylic, 5% polyester. So it is super soft, it's super warm. Didn't, I can't say that I fully enjoyed working with it. It wasn't horrible, <laughs> but I didn't really care working with it a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I will definitely use up the rest of it and I have another ball of it in like a charcoal gray. So it is very beautiful yarn. I love it when it's all knit up. It's nice and cozy. I just didn't enjoy working with it, but can't have it all, right? <laughs> so yeah, I will keep you guys updated. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but as I said, we are working on it and 
we hope to release um, the pattern will include like this cowl and we will also be including like a double wrap as well so yeah look forward to seeing that in the future okay so I'm just going to take a quick look at my show notes here make sure that I didn't skip anything no I did not okay so now I'm going to go on into my whips and where do I start? Okay, I'm just going to start here. <laughs> so the first thing um, that I'm going to show you, you guys have seen this a uh, couple episodes back, I believe. I haven't worked on it in a while. It's being housed in my beautiful bag by J. Henry Designs which uh, J. Henry Designs is from Barrie, Ontario, I believe, if I am correct. There's their beautiful label. And I love the interior of this bag. I love everything about this bag. So in here is my mini autumn tweed pullover by Twin Stitches Designs. Or you can find her on Instagram as Julianne Knitter. So I had casted this on, I'm going to say in November. It was right after the pattern had come out. And I ended up messing up the uh, part of the color work section. And no, I, I ripped it back out because my gauge was too tight. The needles that I chose were too tight. I tend to be a loose knitter, so I gauged down thinking that would help, and it didn't. It was too tight. So I ripped it back out. Then I end up messing up on the color work section. So I ripped it back out again, and I kind of, I recasted it on right away, but I had to let it sit there for a while because I was, you know, a little discouraged. But I picked it back up, and I'm glad I did because it took no time at all to get the yoke done. And I have the body of the sweater all finished now. All I have to do is pick up my sleeves and do those. They are long sleeved, but because this is a yoke sweater, it will take no time at all to do the sleeves. So this sweater is sized from one year, one to two year up to 10. I chose to do the one to two year and yeah it is so beautiful this is for a special little girl her birthday is at the end of next month february so i have a feeling it's going to be slightly big for her but i'm not too concerned about it she'll be able to grow into it a bit so yeah the yarn that i'm using is broco Tuscan Tweed, and I could not tell you what the colorways are. They're more like color numbers, but um, we have this beautiful um, burgundy, and then the brown is also Tuscan Tweed as well. The only thing that's different is the white that is the Cascade hemp uh, that was left over from this sweater. So for this, I did not hold it double. It is a DK weight sweater and they're all DK weight yarns, except for the white. Like I said, I think that falls more in a sport weight, but still worked up uh, beautifully. So yeah, I love it. This is the mini autumn tweed, like I said, works top down. And if you really love this, there is an adult version of it as well. I was looking online, um, there is a different chart for the adult version that you can follow, but I have seen this pat exact pattern on a few of them as well, so I highly recommend it. That is, again, Twin Stitches Designs, and you can find uh, her on Instagram as Julie Ann Knitter. I will post that all below so you can find it. But I am super happy that I decided to pull this one back out and work on it um, because I, I want her to have it before she she grows out of it and 
yeah. So I've been kind of cracking down on some of my whips, which makes me happy. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to share with you is a new cast on. So it's being housed in a made by me bag. I got this beautiful fabric in a de-stash, fabric de-stash, and I just had to, I just had to have it. I love the hummingbirds. It's so pretty. So, um, me and my friend Shelby, we love to uh, do knit-alongs together. And something that we were talking about was casting on the Comfort Fade in the new year. So I was gathering some um, Barocco vintage and I put together some colors. And of course, as soon as I pulled the colors together and looked at it, I had to cast it on because yeah, you know me. So Shelby has since cast hers on as well. She's using different colors though. She's going for, um, she's using um, grays and one of the colors I'm using. So I'll just show you. So yeah. And hopefully I put the tags in the bag because I don't remember the colorway names. <laughs> but here is what I have so far. It's a little scrunched up, but this is the start of my comfort fade so far. So it has worked from the top down with a raglan construction and you do fade. So there's, it's a four color fade. Right now I am working my second color, which this is the color that Shelby will be using in hers along with a, an off white, a lighter medium gray and a charcoal, I believe. So for me, I really loved this. I don't know if it, it's showing up blue here, but it really is a green in real life. And then it goes down into this lighter green. And then I will be using um, a light gray and a charcoal for the bottom. I was inspired by a picture that Shelby had found on Instagram. Somebody had did a, a pink uh, like a medium pink and then it went into a lighter pink and then a light gray and a charcoal so I really really loved it so that's where I got the inspiration for this so that's what I'm doing so that's what I have so far I haven't worked on it a ton but uh, I've set it aside because you know other new shiny things came about and I do not have the labels in here. I was really hoping I did, but I don't. So one of the things, um, one of the colors that I will be putting in here, um, my light gray, I only bought two balls of it. I should have grabbed three for my size, but I didn't. But I ended up finding this one here, and this is Kiwi, Barocco Vintage. <laughs> and I do have three balls of this now and I have three balls of a darker green and I was kind of wondering if I should do that and then the darker green but I don't know I think I'm going to stick to my original with the grays um, I have uh, ordered in the uh, the gray that I'm missing so I think that's what I'm going to do so this will potentially be another comfort fade if I choose to do that in the future because I do have three skeins of this and three skeins of a darker green so um we will see what happens <laughs> if I really enjoy the fit of this card again then it's quite possible I would knit another one because it is mindless knitting it's just plain stockinette and it is a lot of fun. And this is kind of the same concept. Uh, you just want to keep knitting so you can get to that next color. So, yeah. I am about to split for the sleeves. I only have another two inches, I think, to go. 
and then I can uh, start fading in my third color. So that's pretty exciting. So I casted that on. And I'm just going to take a quick drink because I feel a tickle. Okay. So I casted that one on. And I decided at the same time that there was another sweater that I needed. Okay guys, I'm sorry about that. The video caught out. So I'm going to share with you the three colors that I have chosen uh, for the, the contrast colors. So they are all Cascade 220 uh, Superwash Wave. So there's the tag. So the first color is this one here, which is graphite. And you can see how it's darker in the middle. So that's going to be my contrast one. My contrast two, I ended up, this did not come in my kit. I just saw it online and had to have it. So this one is nightshade. And you can see the brighter purples in there, which I love. And then number three, this come from my uh, Night Shift uh, kit. And this one is called Grapes. And as you can, just put that out of the way, as you can see, that would be pulling out the brighter pink. So I'm not really a pink person, but of late, I, I love burgundy. But of late, pink has been coming into my knitting a lot. So paired with black, I think that it will really help to tone down any, any loudness from it. So I'm going with it. And so far, I am not disappointed. So I haven't gotten that much completed yet. But here's what I have so far. I'm just going to pull this up. It is a top down construction. So here's what I have. Not very much at all. I have just started into the uh, to the color work. So there's the graphite and now you can see I'm starting into the nightshade here. So there is not much progress at all, but it's a start. <laughs> So I'm doing like this section up here. So yeah, <laughs> not much progress at all, but uh, it's a start. I'm finding it slightly difficult. I'm used to working color work in the round. So with the throw back uh, being a cardigan, you are working flat. So I have to do color work on the pearl side and pearl. So it's a slight adjustment as to how I'm holding my yarn and trying to keep the right tension and such but I so it's slowing me down considerably but I am not disappointed by it I am just enjoying the knit and I know that I will greatly enjoy the finished object so it will be worth it so that is the throwback by Andrea Mowry not much but it's a start I just wanted to get it on the needles so there is that one. Okay, I have another one here. This one um, I talked about a little bit on my last podcast and I showed the yarn for it. I have uh, joined the January and February knit along that one of my local yarn stores, uh, Yarnit in Coburg. Hi, Kathy. Um, she is hosting an Isabel Kramer knit along. So you can knit any Isabel Kramer uh, pattern that you desire, or you can also join in with Stephen West's Hybrid Knit Along as well. And if you purchase the yarn from Kathy's store, you get uh, the pattern of your choice plus your yarn and you get like a 15% discount. So um, I love Stephen West, <laughs> but sometimes his designs are a little too out 
Okay, we are back again. <laughs> Apparently my phone is running out of storage. Yay. Okay, so as I was saying, I don't know what recorded and what didn't, but uh, Kathy of the Yarnit uh, uh, Yarn Store, she is one of my local yarn stores in Coburg, Ontario. She is doing a January, February knit along. Uh, for any Isabel Kramer pattern, or you can join in on Stephen West Hyper Knit Along. So if you purchase the um, the yarn from her shop, you will get the yarn and your pattern of choice at a 15% discount. So that's pretty awesome. That's what I did, and on last podcast, I shared my yarn choices with you. And I'm not sure... No, I don't have the tag here, but... Um, I chose um, the shawl that I wanted to knit was Isabel Kramer, uh, the girl's best friend, or a girl's best friend, which is a triangle shaped shawl. And one of my favorite uh, versions of this shawl is uh, the, the pink with the lighter and it's like a goldy color. It, she uses it as her sample uh, photo for the pattern. So I knew I wanted the pink. So I chose this beautiful pink. Uh, it's a Madeleine Tosh light. I don't have the ball band in here. I don't know why, but uh, it's just a beautiful light pink and it is a single ply. And the color for the middle that I chose is Trailhead Yarns, which is a local dyer here in Ontario. And it's the Alpachin Trail, 65% cotton, 35% nylon, fingering weight 335 yards. So there is the tag. And there is the infos on the back. So the Madeleine Tosh is a merino. And this is cotton, but I am not concerned at all. Whoa. It is just so beautiful. I'll just try to turn my light down a bit because it's like really washing everything out. There we go. So it's a beautiful natural with speckles of brown and there's some blue in there and gold. It's just very pretty and it's such a beautiful cotton. I really love it. So my third color, I haven't skeined it up yet because I'm not sure which one it's going to be yet. I did get a purple from Kathy, uh, but I, I thought it was brown when I ordered it, but it's actually purple and I kind of really want there to be a gold or a brown in there. So I have a couple options in my stash, so I just haven't decided which one it's going to be yet, but it will be in the the area of brown or gold. So yeah. <laughs> so I casted this one on right after New Year's. I haven't gotten that far. I'm still in section one, but it is very, very much enjoyable. And I always love this first section. Everybody that has done this pattern, I've always admired the first section because I think it's just so delicate and so beautiful yet so simple. It's a very fun pattern. So that's what I got knit so far. Not much at all, but at least I have it casted on. I have till the end of February to finish it. If I don't, it's fine. I'm just doing this for fun. It's a shawl that I've always wanted to knit. I've always enjoyed Isabel Kramer patterns. I haven't knit a lot of them. Um, Sadly, my alias cardigan uh, got lost in our fire, and that was really sad because I literally had just finished it. So, yeah. So, eventually, I, I might knit that one again, but this shawl has been on my radar for quite some time, and so I decided this is the perfect time to cast it on. So, that's what I've done. Okay, so, is that all? No, it's not. I have one more thing. So, another new year, another new knit along. Um, you know, I am a total fangirl of the Cozy Up 
uh, ladies. And every uh, January 1st, uh, they do an annual mystery knit along. And this is the fourth year, and this is the fourth year that I've done it along with them. And so it's always a shawl. You don't know what shape of shawl you're doing or any of the details except for the yarn. So uh, I believe I shared with you guys my yarn last time we talked. So we were told we had to have two skeins of DK weight and a mohair or a fingering. So for me, I chose to use, and the main, your two DKs are supposed to be like a tonal, and then your uh, contrast mohair or fingering should be either a slightly high contrast or the same color, but try not to go overboard with speckle or variegated because you want it to be somewhat similar. So anyways, here is my DK, Cozy Posy Yarn Core, my favorite yarn dyer in the world, being biased, but I love it. Here is the name. It is Midnight Oil, and it is on her Squish Base, which is 100% fine superwash merino, 115 grams or 200 and... 50 yards and it's a four ply DK. Uh, so there, and I love this yarn so much because, and this lighting is showing that off perfectly. When I looked at it online, it looked like a very deep blue. And then when I got it, because there was such light in here, it looked purple. But as you can see, it's like both. It's blue, it's purple, and it's got that black undertone to it. It just sings to me. This is totally me. And as you can see, when you back it up like this, this is what it appears like. Very dark and moody. Cozy posy, all of her stuff. Yeah, I just love. So yeah, fangirl again, but whatever. Uh, so that was my DK. My contrast, I wanted mohair, so I'm using Full Moon Fibers, which is Allison and Jessica Henry, and my J. Henry bag, my purple one with the sheep. This is the same company, and this is Midnight Paddle, and it's a Galactic Halo mohair, 72% kid mohair, 28% silk, 459 yards. There are your deets. And here is the yarn. So I played off the blue and I love it. So uh, Thursday each week, um, it's a five to six week knit along. And every week you get a new part of the pattern come out. So you get a new clue. As I said, it's, it is a mystery. So, uh, clue three just came out on Thursday. So I did clue one and I am on clue two now. So I'm slightly behind. I'm okay with that. If I don't finish it in time, it's fine. I got the urge to pick up some, uh, lingering whips and I've been getting them done. So I am not concerned at all, but I do have clue one and I'm in clue two now. So if you are doing this knit along or would like to do it and do not want to be spoiled, this is where you have to look away because <laughs> I'm about to show, show it. So here we go. Here is clue one. And I cannot tell you how happy I am about this beautiful feather and fan lace. I have always adored the pat stitch pattern, but I've never done it. And yeah i love it it is so simple and easy it is not hard at all so there are two options for your cast on and your edging so you can either do the garter or you can do a second option in the pattern which is like a beautiful twisted cable 
I chose to do the garter just because I I wanted the border to be mindless and I I've now seen because Sarah and Jamie do do tutorials every week with every clue to show you a stitch pattern and such they're both doing different versions uh, so you can see both and I I do prefer the garter so I'm very happy with that choice uh, so then you go down into this is clue one as well so we got this section here which is just done with the mohair and then right here this is starting of clue two so we've got some beautiful striping happening with the DK and the mohair and currently right now I'll show you from this side because it's easier I am on to the um, short rows and buttons as they are called so they're supposed to mimic like a uh, bobble stitch so that's what I have so far and I am plugging away on it and I'm thoroughly enjoying it I cannot wait to wear this because it's gonna be amazing I find it a little hard to work on at night because it is darker so I haven't been working on it as much as I probably could but it's getting there and I'm using a 4.5 millimeter needle so there is that so if you are curious about the knit, a, knit along and would like to join there's still plenty of time these sections do work up fairly fast just bear in mind that you're holding the mohair single in those uh, rows. So if you're not a huge fan, I would suggest uh, going to the fingering weight yarn as an option or using a, uh, a lace weight yarn as well that is not mohair. It is a little difficult to work with, but it's not too bad. So there is that one. So that is the Cozy Up Knits Mystery Knit Along. So this Thursday, I believe it's every Thursday that a new clue comes out. So it'll be clue four this week that comes out. Okay, so that's it uh, for works in progress. I have just a little bit of uh, goodies that I want to share with you guys and then I will end this. So, uh, one of the things that I got in the mail just before Christmas, uh, Cozy Posy did an update, and uh, yeah, you just heard me fangirl over her, but I got a couple of her skeins that she posted. So, we got these two, and I don't know where the tag for that one went to, but these are the ones that I got from her shop update. And I don't know what they're going to be just yet. I might be stealing the brown to go into the girl's best friend that I just showed. But that's what I got. So, as I said, I don't know where the tag went for the brown one, but this one here is called Penny, which is a beautiful copper color. And my light is blowing it out, so it's a lot darker. I would say that's more true. So this is Penny. And then we have ch Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, which I believe this one was one of her Christmas, uh, Christmas colorways, or Christmas themed colorways. And like I said, I don't remember. It might've been Walnut, but do not quote me on that at all. I'm probably mistaken. So we got that one and then we have straw flower and I think this is such a unique colorway again I apologize about that lighting okay we might just do that <laughs> it is a beautiful gold and it's got some pops of um, pops of pink in there I just love it so yeah, I don't know what's going to become of them. Um, I keep thinking about a Vertices Unite in uh, some brown colors. So maybe that's an option. Not sure yet, but it's an option. 
Another thing that I got, uh, I treat for myself for Christmas was Polka Dot Creek has been doing monthly sock sets and mini skein sets. So I believe this was January. It doesn't say, I think it was January. So it was Pearl two together, silver and sea spray were the contrasting minis. So I already stole the gray one. <laughs> it come with uh, this beautiful uh, teal colored uh, mini and a gray one. And the main skein has, you can see the teal and there's some gray in there. Such a beautiful colorway. Don't know what it's gonna be yet. Quite possibly it will be socks. I don't know, but you can see, uh, can see her tag, Shelly of Polka Dot Creek. And there is your back details. So beautiful. She, uh, January's colorways uh, that are out now, there is a few of them. They're really pretty too. Hard to resist, but I got that one. And I also, um, I also got a few more things. I Sorry about the crinkling. Oops, sorry, sex. I also got some of her, I'm not going to take them out of the bag. Polka Dot Creek has now got their own um, uh, wash, wool wash. So we've got fresh linen wool wash which is Cozy Up Knits Signature, and it's amazing. I definitely want more of that. We got Reindeer Treats and Sweather Weather, and all three of them smell amazing. I really love them, but the uh, Fresh Linen is my favorite. I really love that one. So I got that in the same order, and it's sassy, yeah. <laughs> Um, I got one more thing in the mail. Um, I went on to Facebook Marketplace and I noticed that, uh, somebody had a huge stash of, uh, indie dyed yarn, um, that she was destashing. And I got in on that and I grabbed a couple skeins from her. So hi, Andrea, if you're watching. Um, she is here in Ontario, so I just pulled out a couple of them. You can see the, um, that one up there, the brown and orangey colored one. There's two skeins of that. I got those from her as well. Um, I think there was some um, Malabrigo in there. This, I only pulled out a couple to share with you guys, but this one I really love. I've never heard of this one before. It's Tina's Twisted Fibers. You can find her on Etsy as uh, Tina's Twisted Fibers. And this one is 75% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon. And it also has silk in there as well, 438 yards. And I believe it's called Iris Garden. And I really, really love it. It's like a lavender purple and it's got those copper colors in there and oh my god it's just so pretty and it come with a little stitch marker as well it's just so beautiful so i uh i posted a make nine on my instagram and one of them is a shawl three colored shawl i don't remember the name of it but i was thinking this one might possibly go well with this one, Penny of Cozy Up Knits. And what else would go with it? I'm not 100% sure. Maybe pull out a little bit of the gold. I don't know yet. Just thoughts. I don't know. But I have that one, which I'm super happy about. And I was super happy that uh, she had a Rose Hill yarn skein in there as well. And this is market fresh so there's the tag rose hill yarns 
And it is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards. I'm just going to fold that up and put it back in there before I lose it again. And here it is. So how beautiful is this? I love it. it kind of reminds me of Christmas. But um, I have a bright yellow from Timber Yarns, like a mini skein. And Cozy Up Knits has been doing a new striped sock pattern. So I've kind of been thinking of uh, doing something fun with that as socks. I'm not sure. But that's what I got in the mail. I got a few more things, but that's just what I'm going to share with you today. So, yeah. That's it for this week. Detailed show notes can be found uh, down below in the description box where I post direct links to Ravelry where you can find the patterns and all that good stuff. So until next time, have a good one and happy knitting. Bye.